Ready, Captain? Ready, sir. Commence! Fire in! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ten hits, area A, dummy number three. Ten hits, area A, dummy number three. Seven hits, area A, dummy number four. Seven hits, area A, dummy number four. Ten hits, area A, dummy number five. Ten hits, area A, dummy number five. Three hits, area A, dummy number six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At least 60 hits, sir. Good distribution on all but the two end targets. Good. Number seven target coming up. Report, sir. Congratulations, Captain Scott. Looks like you're on the right track. Oh, if I can just correct that jam, sir. Nevertheless, a remarkable demonstration. Firing from a fixed position. What's that, Captain? Why, that's the weenie, sir. The weenie? Yes, sir, that's what does the trick. It looks like a five-cent cigar. <laughs> and uh, can this weenie be adjusted to any machine gun, Captain? Well, if my calculations are correct, sir, can you imagine that against enemy aircraft, sir? Well, it'll revolutionize anti-aircraft defense. If you can correct that stoppage fault, you'll have done your country a great service. Well, Captain Hayden was in on it too, sir. Don't believe him, sir. As a matter of fact, I had nothing to do with it. He's been talking about it ever since we were cadets. There'll be credit enough for everyone concerned. I'll arrange for you to return to Montreux immediately, Captain. Continue your experiments and let me know when you're ready for the big test. Yes, sir. Sure envy you, Scotty, old man. I'd like to be going out there with you. Could use a few of those cool Pacific breezes. Well, you would be a spoony dude. That's why you get all these cushy school details. What's cushy about Washington in the summertime? Got time for a cocktail? No, I'm on my way to the generals for tea. Atta boy. Stand to heel and they'll soon let you coach the ladies' polo team. How's about coming along? No, not me. I'm just waiting for a laboratory report and then back to the mines. Boy, what'll I tell the gang at Monterey what's happened to dude Hayden? Oh, don't do that, old man. Let them remember me as an old-fashioned cavalry man with straw in my hair and hay in my britches. Well, old horse, see you at the station. Okay, I'll be looking for you. Secret agents. 
Why must you reporters always talk like dime novels? The General, isn't it true that Captain Scott was working on a new anti-aircraft device? Well, every worthwhile officer in the Army is working on something or other to improve our material. Captain Scott's death was an accident. Regrettable, but nonetheless commonplace. He was cleaning a gun and didn't know it was loaded. But General, the... That'll be all, gentlemen. I know, General, but the... I uh, hope uh, I made myself clear. And now, if you'll excuse me. Well, it looks mighty funny to me. Mm -hmm. Sorry to keep you, Captain, but those reporters... Well, sit down, sit down. It's a nasty mess. There's some excuse for a wartime spy. At least he's working for his country. But those freelance agents, despicable lot. Washington, well, every capital is infested with them, peddling secrets to the highest bidder. Sorry, sir, I should have gone with Captain Scott when he asked me to. Don't blame yourself, Captain. Consider how fortunate it is that you saved the device. <laughs> Forgive me if that sounds heartless, my boy, but... I understand, sir. Yes? Oh. Well, all right, send her in. Sorry, Captain, but a lady is very anxious to see me. Do you mind? Not at all, sir. I'll wait out here. I'll just be a minute. I hate to bother you, General, but... Quite all right, Mrs. Bruce. Sit down. Well, what is it this time? Red Cross, Community Chest, or a horseshoe? I have annoyed you, haven't I? <laughs> but this time it's a little more serious. I came to see you about Captain Scott. Captain Scott? Yes, the cavalryman who was found dead in his apartment last night. Oh, yes. Well, too bad we haven't yet found a way to take the hazard out of an empty gun. Then you're sure it was an accident? Of course. What else could it be? Well, I don't know, but uh, Captain Scott was to take me to a reception at the Andersons last night. He phoned me that he was on his way. Isn't it rather strange that he should stop to clean a gun? Strange, but apparently true. I waited until after nine. When he didn't come, I went on without him. The news of his death was quite a shock. Yes, it was to all his friends. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bruce, and forgive me if I've destroyed an intrigue for you. You have, effectually. I rather fancy myself as an Oppenheim heroine. <laughs> Goodbye. Come in, Captain. I couldn't help overhearing, sir. Yes, sir. But I didn't know that Captain Scott had time for receptions. Oh, well, everybody who gets to Washington meets Mrs. Bruce. She's sort of a reception committee. Now, how about the assignment? Willing to undertake it? Willing, sir. I'm very anxious. Good. You are returning to your regiment from a school detail assigned through regular channels. The commanding officer at Monterey will know nothing of your connection with this office, nor are you at liberty to tell him. You will conduct yourself as a line officer serving with troops. Take Captain Scott's place, and continue his experiments. Your mission is to protect the device and apprehend the agent or agents interested in it. Questions? No, sir. You have your transportation? Yes, sir. Plane leaves at six. That's all, Captain. <laughs>